I'm Marcia Winbeckler, and my husband Roland and I own CakeSuppliesPlus.com. We're professional cake decorating instructors, and we've appeared on the Food Network and TLC's Ultimate Cake Off. We're also known for our life-size cake sculptures that we do oven for celebrities, and photos of those are available on our website too. I want to show you how I make like package bows today and I've just rolled out some fondant fairly thin and I'm going to put a little bit of the Ultra Sparkle Pearl looks real nice and turn it over so that both sides has that and that'll also keep my textured rolling pin here from sticking and I want to go across this with the textured rolling pin and they come in different designs but and just kind of keep even pressure as I go along on it. I usually start in the center and work one direction and then go the other direction so it, otherwise it so it doesn't pull up if you start at the ends. Then I take my ribbon cutter and it comes with different ends on it so you can get different designs but I kind of like this little fluted design. It comes with the one that's almost like a stitching and then plain round ones but then I just want to roll along and make my ribbon pieces and I kind of hold down the edge of the fondant when I start it because it wants to kind of peel up on you sometimes but and you can just kind of go right along and I'm going to use my pastry scraper and I love this thing because I also use it to measure the length of my my bows but I'm just going to take the ends off and then I'll peel away the odd strips so that I only have my even uh, uniform strips left and they're not sticking so much because of that uh, ultra sparkle, sparkle or pearl dust that I had on there and I want these in five and a half inch lengths and so I kind of line up there they don't have to be perfect at five and a half sometimes I'll use a little bit shorter sometimes a little bit longer but I found for this size of bow that I'm going to make today, five and a half inches is about right, so I'm going to measure and it would come to about here, so I can use this then and just go all the way across. And it looks like I'm about perfect. I rolled it so I got two out of, uh, two sets out of here. And the next thing I want to do is take a pizza cutter or some type of cutter and I'm going to form a V, a fairly sharp V on each end of the ribbon piece. And I'll do that with all of these so that they look like that. Now you can probably see part of my bow drying rack but I'm going to show a full picture of it. We have these on our website. You can make them. They're out of PVC pipe and the different joints. And uh, we use the half inch here for this size of bow. And but um, it does take a lot of the pieces, and they're pretty. <clears throat> they end up adding up, and uh, we, you know, can get them in bulk for making them for our website. So we have a pretty reasonable price on it. It saves you all that time. And then to put the bow pieces on the rack. I have turned over the pieces so the textured side is down right now and I'm just adding a little bit more of the sparkle dust on the back so they don't stick to the bow rack. You could use corn starch but uh, and I'm using this pump brush for my ultra sparkle here and you just simply pump air into it and then it's ready to dispense the sparkle or pearl. I actually mark whichever one I'm using this US for ultra sparkle in here and then I know when I look at it what I've got in there. And I just want to put these pieces over the rack and do them all at once like this. And then I'll go back and add a little bit of water to the pointed area on one side. And then I will join them together. So just a little bit of water to one side. I'll go along and do all of them at once. And that's on the inside of the back piece that I'm doing. Just adding a little bit of water. And make sure my hands are dry. And I'll go back and 
just join the two points together and make sure I've got my bow piece centered here on the rack and kind of facing straight down so that the loop is nice and rounded up here. Once my bow pieces are dry, which usually takes a few hours or even overnight, then I will assemble the bow and I want to put a little mound of icing in the center and then I'll go out and depending on the size of my bow pieces, I want to go about a third of the way out. So I'm going to make a circle about a third of the way out of icing. Then just start setting the pieces. And see those, the reason I have cut the point in the center on the arrow kind of at the end is that it makes it much easier without a lot of bulk in the center for you don't have a lot overlapping in the center to make it real bulky in there. And you kind of look for, you know, maybe some you've cut a little bit different lengths and uh, maybe you might want a shorter one then so it doesn't have to go in as far. So I'll just fit one in there that's a little bit shorter. Same over here. Then I would put more icing on top for the next layer to go into. And um, normally you'd use royal icing or melted candy or something to, uh, to kind of glue them together. You can use buttercream, but then it may ruin your pieces if you needed to move it or anything like that. Then just sort of in the spaces where the other pieces were not, I just go add some more. And if you need a little more of the icing in there, just add that so it has something to stick to. I don't really, I've seen where some people tilt the pieces sideways. I don't really care for that. I have never seen bows really that are made that way. So it's just a personal preference though. If you need to adjust the size of any of these, if your fondant's still soft enough, you can go back and cut them a little bit shorter. 